Sometimes people ask us, how much does it cost to rescue an old vehicle? In today's video, we've compiled a group of videos that we made about a vehicle we rescued about two years ago to show you what it takes, what to look for, and what it costs to rescue an old vehicle. Hopefully this might provide you some information and motivation to rescue your own. And to help you get started, we're going to do a giveaway of a $300 JF Eguo jump box. If this is your first time on the channel, we do giveaways occasionally, but this one is really special. This thing is the real deal. I'm going to show it to you. It's super small, but super powerful. It's very high quality. Even the box is really well done. The case is well done. This is only, what, nine, nine and a half inches? I think it's nine. Nine inches. So it's small, it's light. It's packaged well. And this is it. This is the box. It's 6,000 amps. It's got all kinds of features like a huge display. This one we've been using, so this is not the one you're gonna get. The one you're gonna get is brand new. It's got a 600 lumen light. It also has a flash mode. Oh, that hurts my eyes. <laughs> it's got all kinds of charge ports. You can actually power your laptop with the USB-C connection. Yeah. It's got USB-A. And it'll fast charge your phone as well. It'll fast charge your phone. It comes with its own charger to charge the unit itself. It's got this very cool cigarette lighter connection. And of course, the cables to jump the vehicle. I haven't tried it on a 13 liter diesel, but supposedly this is advertised to do a 13 liter diesel. I can tell you it does V8s, gas engines, just fine. It's also waterproof and has short circuit protection. Yeah, that's right. So if you get the cables backwards or short them, it just shuts itself off. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's a nice rig. So we're gonna give a brand new one of these away. The way we're gonna give it away is we have a, a new channel, our second channel. It's called More What The Rust, and it's right down there. We're, if you subscribe to that channel, then you're automatically entered into the giveaway. Once we surpass a thousand subscribers, we're gonna hold a drawing and we'll give this away to one of the participants. Yeah. If you've already subscribed, it's okay. You'll be included. All thousand or 1100, whenever we cut it off, will be included in the giveaway. Yeah. So you get a pretty good chance here. And um, we'll make sure that the drawing is fair and we will let you watch it, just so you'll know. And don't forget, again, that retails on Amazon right now, which you also have a link to that below, um, but that retails on Amazon for $2.99.99 plus tax. Yep. Okay, enough of this. Let's get back to the video. So it's not stuck. Clutch pedal works good. I mean, it's got it's got brake pedal. I don't know. It could be everything stuck, but it does have brake pedal. Dash is cracked in a bunch of places. So was it good? Cab mounts are good. They want to hold that. I'm just going to look in the master cylinder and I think I've seen enough. Cleaning out the, the truck. Um, I bought it. That's a lot of stuff to clean out. And there's a tree growing in it. Here's the, so far the bed floor. It's in amazingly good condition so far. And 
amazing. There's no rust in this floor. This thing was covered in dirt and trees and bugs. There is not a hole of any size in this bed. Not a hole. Nothing. So that is great news. Now, next trick. When we got here, the tailgate was open. Will it close? Here goes nothing. things that we noticed immediately was that the paint is in excellent condition. At least excellent condition compared to what we're accustomed to seeing. Um, it's, it's rather shocking how good of um, shape the paint is in. Did they leave the key? They did not leave a key that I know of. I'm gonna call that guy. But this thing is just gross. As you can imagine. Um, the owner the owner said this truck's been sitting, what, 10, 9, 10 years? More? 12? Yeah, at least 12. He said maybe more. I think he was scared to really tell us how long it had been sitting. He said there's a hole in the gas tank. Um, that's not necessarily bad, because the gas tanks would be full of crap anyway. Christina found a slip for these tires from the year 2000, with 3,000 miles on the odometer less than this has. So from 2000 and now, this thing only went 3,000 miles. And uh, I'm thinking that this thing has been sitting a long time, like close to 20 years. So maybe the hole in the gas tank is a rust hole. Who knows? Um, there is a super bad smell coming from somewhere. I don't know if it's coming from this car or because I have this door open, but it's one of the worst smells I've ever experienced. It really sounds like something is very dead. It smells like something's very dead. So I'm going to take all this crap out of here. Um, I don't want this at my house. And that's our tow truck. Yeah. Next is to clean the inside. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Is Rocking that, out to 80s tunes. Is that a clue the radio doesn't work? Um, well, that is a good point. This might have been the radio. It looks like... Uh, it burned up at one point, doesn't it? It's all melted. I have to decide whether I want that or not. Might be good for historical purposes. The chainsaw chain. I'll take that. Oh. oh, man. Never underestimate the fragility of old plastic bags. Not so bad inside, you know, not great, but not so bad. Well, you've had one. What's this all about? <gasps> uh, I thought that was a key to the truck. It's not, it's key to something. Maybe there's a key to the truck in here. Something in here. Looks like sunglasses of some, some fold up sunglass set. Oh, I remember these. Anybody remember these from the 90s? These Ferraris or 80s? Ferraris fold up sunglasses that weren't really Ferrari. I'm sorry to admit that I had a pair. Whew, it's hot. I'm praying there's a key in here. On to the other side. All right, on the other side, look at this. This is a great idea. Put your pen on the seat belt. You'll never lose it. What a cool idea. Um, saw blades. 
for a side saw I don't need. Oh, this is, is the uh, mirror in really good shape. Um, automatic transmission fluid. This thing's got a stick. Yeah. So what this is for, I don't know. Somebody added delay wipers to this. It must not have had them from the factory. I know it was an option, so somebody added them later. Oh, there's some pockets here. I wonder if there's a key in one of these pockets. Oh, uh oh. And uh, oh, nothing. So remember how we said we didn't think it had been they had it had been ran since 2001. Yeah. Well, I don't want to zoom in on that because it has their name. The last insurance is October 2001. Okay. So I think we got it. You're right. You're right. Thank you. All right. This is interesting. We have a uh, some kind of snow ice scraper that's actually wedged from the tree to the back bumper. I'm not sure what the point in that was, but the tree's actually grown around it a little bit. There's a mark in the tree from it. So this plate says September 2001. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think this has been driven for 20 years. I think you're right. You just saw what it's like to check out the vehicle for the first time. There are a few things always to look for. Of course, the first is rust. Sounds pretty obvious, but it's not so obvious. Some people, they'll just look at a fender, it's like, yep, that's solid, no rust there, but they're missing the important points. Like if it's a pickup truck, check the cab mounts. It's where the cab bolts to the frame. Make sure that they're solid. The frame itself, rust on a frame is fine. Rust holes on a frame is bad, walk away. Is the engine complete? Pop the hood. If it's missing parts, forget it, walk away. Um, it's probably gonna be much more work and there's probably something wrong with the engine, so forget about that. Check the fluids. Pull the dipstick, wipe it clean, pull it again. Make sure it looks okay. A little dirty is fine and should be expected, maybe even black, but no water. Make sure there's no water in it. Same with the transmission dipstick, no water. It'll look milky if there's water in it. Um, so those are the real basic things to first to, to check first. One more thing, if you live in the South or in Tennessee, make sure that you have some of this with you. You won't regret it. Now it's time to try to get this thing running. First order of business is get this air cleaner off. They were very tight, but they came off fine once I soaked them for the last week. I haven't had a chance to touch this all week. It's been too rainy here in Tennessee and I've been too busy. But it'll be interesting to see what's under here. Hopefully nothing in the carburetor. I don't think there is because I'm able to get a view of it when I pry it up. Oh boy, look at that. Wow. This thing has been sitting a long time. Looks like there's a rubber gasket. The rubber gasket is probably fossilized. So it wasn't stuck. There was a, a bolt right there in the middle that goes through it. 11 millimeter head. Um, look at the mess. Look at the mess, but this air filter saved everything. It's not that old either. Well, old, not that dirty. Um, look at that. Nothing got past the air filter, so this is all nice. That is good news, really good news. So none of this got into the carburetor. It's gonna be the first time that this thing has had electricity in a long time. We're gonna hook the battery up, check the lights, then we're gonna see if it turns over. The Mr. Oil's in the cylinders now. All the plugs look good, except number five. The first one I took out that you saw didn't look good. The others look great. Nothing. Nothing.
That ignition switch is still screwed up, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to jump it, which I can do. It's just going to be a hassle that it's stuck in reverse, so I'm going to have to figure this out. Okay, we're going to try to jump the solenoid because it's not it's not behaving. So we'll see. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. Next step, put the plugs in, see if this thing will fire. Okay. So that's the door spark module. I haven't checked for spark yet, but look at that. It's melted. These things do melt. Um, it's melted, and the resin from inside has stuck to the wheel well, which has then gathered all kinds of sna uh, snails and leaves and dirt over the years. So that box has to go. <laughs> okay, good deal. So we get spark. I, I can't believe that one. Really can't. All right, plugs are going back in. It's hot. Let's try it. how this goes now. Smelled uh, essentially burning leaves, and I've got burning leaves. Oil's nice and clean, you know, considering it's been sitting this long. I already bought the oil for an oil change, 
but honestly it's not sludgy so I'm not doing any damage to it by running it like this problem is this is a homemade dipstick and I don't know what's full so we're checking the clutch and the brakes see if we can get it started with the key don't start with the key no. So you don't have to spend a lot initially. So far in the video, I've bought a battery, I've bought some cooling, and I've bought an oil change. That's it so far. Um, you're going to end up doing this in your driveway. You're going to do your own will it run. And that's something to really get excited about, at least for me and probably for you. This one was a very simple start. And it was simple because we prepped. We pulled the plugs, we put mystery oil in the cylinders, we cleaned up the plugs, we made sure the wires were all correct and in good shape. So we prepped and it looked simple, and it was simple compared to many, but the, the proper prep will get you where you need to be. In the area of prep, there's a couple of tools I'm gonna to show you that you really should have. And the first is this. This is just a remote starter switch. You press the button and it spins the starter over. That's all it does. It doesn't activate the ignition, nothing else. You just hook 12 volts to one and to the starter cylinder on the other. On Fords, it's right up top. On and Chrysler's, on GM's, it's down by the starter. Very simple, it comes with instructions. And it's cheap. The next one is this. Probably the most important thing when you're trying to get an old vehicle started. This is a spark checker. You just plug this end onto the spark plug, this end onto the wire that went to the spark plug, and as you turn the engine over, this will light up if you get spark. This thing is super cool, and guess what? I think this costs $6. So, you need one of these. You ought to have one of these, but you really need one of these. So it's funny to look back at myself two years ago when I didn't use these, and how much easier resurrecting old vehicles get when you have some simple stuff like this. Don't make the same mistake I did. Okay, cleaning time. Let's see what we've got to work with here. It's so dirty we can't even see what's rusted and what's not. Thing. A chip yeah, I here. just saw that. I wonder if this is a repaint, right? Mm -hmm. This door might have gotten damaged or something. Beautiful. Wow. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this area. Now, ideally, I should be using a buffer for this, but I just plugged my buffer in and it's broken. So I'm going to do it by hand. Cutting takes a long time. If you think you're going to cut a vehicle like this, like you would a wax job, it's not going to happen. I mean, this fender alone could take an hour to cut right. Even with a buffer, it's probably going to take you a half hour to cut right. It takes a long time but we're only gonna do a small sp spot as a test. This is not the best thing to use, but like I say, my buffer is uh, not working at the moment, so let's, let's try it. All I right. have used the mi microfiber tiles before for cutting. They do work. It's just not the best thing to use. This strips off the paint, so you can't leave it like this. You then have to follow it up with wax to protect it. Okay. Not polish, wax. So this is this is Carnuba wax. Just like you would regular wax a car, apply it, let it haze, take it off. That's all you need to do. But if you if you cut your car, that paint is now bare to the elements. You need to protect it. So we'll be doing that on this section in a bit. Never underestimate 
how good you're going to feel once the vehicle is cleaned. It makes an amazing difference every single time. So when I bought this truck, one of the reasons that uh, it was sold was supposedly there was a hole in the gas tank and uh, that's why it was parked. Maybe so. That's kind of weird that the truck this rust free would have a hole in the gas tank, but the gas tank filler is here. So the tank, you had a lot of tank options in 1980 on pick, Ford pickups, but the tank is right there. Right here. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Holy cow. Wow. Look at that hole. That's like four inches across. This, oh, this is the sock for the uh, fuel gauge. Oh, wow. I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, it's got a hole in the gas tank, all right. It looks like maybe it had multiple holes over time and they were plugged. That is weird. The rest of the tank is okay. Underneath is in really good shape. That is so weird. Fuel pump's still working fine. No leaks. Idling good. No complaints really. When the belt's not squeaking, the engine's actually pretty quiet. So I ordered a whole bunch of parts that'll be in soon. Gas tank, brake hoses, brake cylinders, master cylinder, you name it. Um, so we've got lots of work to do once the parts start arriving. But obviously, the fuel system is almost ready to go once I put the tank in. I'll show you all how to do that. Putting the gas tank in the uh, Ford is the new tank, is the old one. So I've let the uh, lines on the master cylinder sit overnight with mystery oil on them. I'm gonna see what happens now when I, when I try to loosen them up. You have to use a flare wrench, of course, on these because they round over real easy. I'm just heating up the fitting. Not the master cylinder, not the line. Now they're all going to get hot, of course. But my intention is to expand the fitting so that when I crank on it, it'll pop loose from the line. I'm going to put my wrench on it and give it a, a quick movement. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's moving. It's moving, see that? It's moving and the line is not moving. Oh, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. I think I just broke the line. Oh, crap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I broke the line. So my experiment failed. Um, okay, well, I'm going to try it on the back one. So I don't have to replace two lines. And maybe I'll just reflare this guy rather than replace it. Um, the back one, the, the, uh, the fitting's a little little bigger, so maybe it'll work better. And I'm also going to use the map gas. This propane's not working for me. All right, now we're going to try it with the map gas. The map gas is way hotter. Not sure about this one either. It's moving the same way the other one did. But I do believe this one's going to work. I think I've got it loose enough that it's... Yeah, yeah, this one's going to work. Okay, cool. So I saved one of them. I'm taking a break from the master cylinder. Um, let it cool down. I'm going to try to get some of these lug nuts off. These things are tight, fused, fused, tight. Whew. 
this one doesn't want to go. Instead, it wants to kill me. might be some of you saying why isn't he using an impact gun because I can't find it it's somewhere in my garage and I can't find it so I'm doing it the way it used to be done when men were men <laughs> <laughs> the master cylinder's out anyway here it is and as you can see the front port isn't leaking at all it's completely plugged up the rear port's leaking a little bit, but I took this off. This is the rubber boot that goes on the end, and look at that. That crystallization is moisture. So, this thing's in really bad shape. Really bad. I purchased this line off of uh, Amazon. I think the company is called Four Lifetimes or something like that. I've never used this before, but it's uh, it's three sixteenths like I need, and it's twenty five feet, which is more than I need. And it, it's cool. I didn't know this, but it comes with a bag full of connectors. And I'm preparing the new line. So the uh, driver's side was a real bear to get off because the e brake is stuck on. This is just. see how far out the piston is and this thing is it's junk a couple of minutes later the new one's in now i need to figure out what i'm going to do about this emergency brake being stuck on what i did was i just pulled the uh, parking brake cable out for now it's it's stuck badly so i just pulled it out and uh i'm going to soak it in mystery oil for a few days that should free it up um, but check this out. I've never seen this before. I've been working on cars since more, more years than I can count. Check this out. Here's the rear brake pad. It goes in the back. See anything funny there? Look at that ridge. Now how in the world did a ridge like that get here? I'll tell you how and I didn't know this was possible. This thing was mounted upside down. It's supposed to be like that. So the previous owner somehow got this in, but had it upside down. That must have been some real crappy brakes, I don't know. Um, but this pad shot, I can't reuse it, so I'm gonna have to get pads and possibly a caliper. This is supposed to go in like this, like that. And you can see that ridge is making the brake unusable. So this hole, this whole pad needs to be changed. Um, I've got new brake hoses for it. They're being a hassle to get out, as you can imagine, without snapping things off. So I'm working on that. But this caliper, um, I've got the bleeder loose. So when you compress this, blew it ought to squirt out, it ought to be just fine. And it's not. It's off to the store for some brake shoes and a caliper. Okay, so you've got this caliper in place there. I mean, that pad, the back pad is in. It's not upside down, which is nice. This one's in, this only goes in one way. In fact, to get the one in upside down, it's really not an easy task. You don't want this thing coming out, but you don't have to put 80 pounds of torque on this thing either. Okay, that's tight. Okay, caliper is in, it's idling for the most part. Belt squeaking as I expected it to. Well, let's see if I can back up. This is uh, three on the tree. So reverse is all the way up and in. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah. And it's got brakes. Oh yeah. It's got brakes. The clutch seems fantastic. All right. So I was dressed way too nice for taking wheels off. I have no idea what I was thinking. Don't dress like that if you're going to take wheels off an old vehicle. But it's important to know a few things. Always change brake hoses. If a vehicle's been sitting more than a few years, 
change them. They're cheap and it's, it's just simple insurance for safety. Um, of course, check the brakes. Um, don't mess around with the brakes. If something looks suspect, change it. Um, again, it's safety first. Um, every vehicle is going to have something weird, something that doesn't make any sense. In this particular truck, it was the brake pad being upside down. And there's some humor in that. You're going to see it. Usually it's with wiring. You uncover the most crazy things people do with wires. Um, but in this case, it was brakes. One last thing to check before I take this on its inaugural drive is the cooling system. I wish I checked it closer before. Um, it's kind of a mess. You can see inside there. It's pretty bad. Um, it's also the thermostat is pretty bad. The thermostat's actually working, um, but it was so gummed up, I don't know that any water was getting past it, so I need to address that before I drive it. Um, boy, look at the other side of that hose, that's not good either. There may be some hope here. Um, there's a weep hole in every water pump so that when the bearing starts to go bad, it starts to leak. Um, using this mirror, now you're not going to be able to see this, I doubt, but the weep hole is there and it's leaking. <clears throat> so it could be, and you can see the leak there, it could be that it's just the water pump. Water pump is in, new hose on the bottom, one of the heater hoses has changed, we'll be changing the other one as well, but it's in. Now uh, I'm going to try to fill it up and see if anything leaks. All right, days come. I've been through a lot of trials and tribulations with this truck, the most recent being that I thought I overheated it and uh, blew the head gasket or cracked the head, none of that was true. It was a really shot water pump that was leaking. So that's been changed. Um, the brakes, of course, are all done. A uh, bunch of other little stuff I can't think of at the moment. And uh, it's time to take it for its first drive. This baby's gonna see the road. Brakes are good. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Woo! Man, this is cool. I can feel these tires, they're very old. And you can feel that they're very old. This is really cool. I, w I wish you could get the feel of it. You know, you get the gear wind from first gear and the six cylinder three on the tree, it feels like you're driving a truck from the 50s. Kind of sounds it too, with the rubber floor mat and all. I mean, it's, it's primitive. Even for a 1980, it's primitive. The first drive. It is so cool. If you've never been there, it's an amazing experience, an amazing feeling to see the work that you've done, pulled some vehicle out of almost scrap, and made it roadworthy again. It's fantastic. In this case, the sound of the transmission, um, the three on the tree, uh, the rubber floor mat, the bad tires. These are memories that I, you'll never forget. At least I never do. I, I remember that drive like it was yesterday. Back at it today, working on the Ford. I took it for a short ride the other day out on a more main road and Besides the tires being so flat spotted that it was actually shaking the entire truck, um, the alternator belt broke and the power steering belt started making tons of noises. So both of those need to get changed. Um, the, um, I can't be too tough on the auto parts store because this thing has a weird, weird setup. Somebody added this AC unit later. So the whole belt configuration is messed up. Um, but I found this old guy hanging on my wall. I don't know when that's from, but it's it's old. Um, and it fits the alternator perfectly. 
and uh, it's a new belt. It's been sitting around for a while, but it's a new belt, but it fits perfectly. So that's in. Um, can't finish up because of the power steering belt, so I'll have to get back to that. Now moving on to this smog pump. I'd like to remove it. Um, it's sticking. It's not seized, but it's sticking. I don't know what it means to remove it, so I'm going to play with it and see. Next step is the wheels. Okay, so we got a couple of coats of white on. It looks really good. Super happy with it compared to where it was before to where it is now. So it's on the truck. I just thought I'd test fit it, see how it looked. The uh, tires I need to get um, probably next weekend. So the tires kind of make it look a little crappy because they have paint all over them, but the tires are so, so bad that, that they're junk anyway. They're going to look fantastic with the new tires. I don't think you can do better, and I wanted to keep the original wheels. Um, so I've been able to do that. Small outlay of money. Not too much work. I mean, sanding it, honestly, it's not fun. I'm sure you guys have all sanded stuff before, and it's not fun. But I'm super happy with how this came out. And uh, I'm almost done with this this truck now. Um, I got to get the tires, obviously. I have to put the, the new locks in the doors. I've got some new locks for it because I don't have the key for the door. And I've got to fix the vacuum leak at the base of the carb. Uh, and once that's done, that's done. I think this thing's going to be done. Today I'm taking the truck on uh, its first long ride. Got the new wheels on it, or the painted wheels on it, with the new tires. It's running good, it's running good, it's driving good too. Brakes don't pull. Um, steers great. These foots steer really, really easy. One finger steering. also idling a little higher than I'd like but it's quite cold today so it's not running hot at all I've got a 160 thermostat in it it's a good one for sure a little tricky pulling out of here the gas gauge works with the new tank and the new sender temp gauge works doesn't have an oil gauge speedo works should be accurate because it's the right size tires it's a cool truck I think just a few months ago this thing was inches from the junkyard So what do you think about the wheels? Pretty nice for the cost of a few cans of paint and a lot of hard work sanding. Wheels and tires make a huge difference. Spend some time thinking about the wheels and tires for your vehicle. Maybe you do like I did, keep it original, maybe not, but put thought into it. There's nothing that changes the look of a vehicle like wheels and tires. So how much did we spend? How much did we sell it for? Who bought it? All of that is coming up next. Time to go. Been a good girl. All right, big question. How much did I spend on this truck? Well, thanks to a smoking deal I got on tires, brand new tires from Goodyear. Um, I only have 2,800 into the truck. That's counting the purchase price, the tow, the plates, and all the parts I put into it, including the tires. How much did I sell it for? Well, 
I sold it for $3,500. So you think, whoa, you only made $700? You worked on this thing for over a month and, and uh, you made $700? That's not the point. The point is, I took a vehicle that was either going to get parted out or junked, one or the other, and I got it back into someone's hands that loves it and it's back on the road being used. So who is this person? Who bought it? Um, a young couple in Tennessee bought it, young, young to me, <laughs> um, and they have a 15-year-old son who they want to get him an older truck for his first vehicle, and this vehicle is for him. They came to see it at night. They were so excited they wanted to grab it quick, so they came at night. Um, they, the, the owner, had the, the new buyer, had never driven a three on the tree, but he mastered it like that. It, the two minutes of showing him how to do it, he picked it right up, and I knew I had found the right buyer. Because you don't have to sell it to someone you don't think is going to be the right buyer. Um, someone that might abuse it or part it out or junk it. I mean, I've had people come for vehicles that I've had for sale and tell me straight out, they're just going to pull the engine and junk the rest, and that's usually like a no-go for me. This wasn't the case. They liked it so much, the very next day, they sent me a selfie driving the son to work, to, to school in the truck. And it's like, that's just perfect for me. So it's not about making $700, it's about saving the vehicle. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please, we ask you that you do so. Just to let you know, we have three fantastic Willet runs in the process right now. One of them a barn find, one that's been sitting since 1992, and another one, a funny story of how it came to be. So, look forward to talking, you, talking to you in the comments. Until then, have a good night. You got to have this stuff. <laughs> Let's try that again. One other thing. If you live in the South or in Tennessee, you gotta be quick. Oh, I thought it was so good. No. Okay. One other thing. If you live in the South or in Tennessee, <laughs> come on. It's not this hard. It is this hard. One more thing. When you're looking at these vehicles, if you live in the South or in Tennessee, make sure that you have some of this with you. <laughs>